Hello and welcome to the Yarnings Podcast. I'm Christine and I'll be your host. This is episode 56. I think I'm calling it Miles of Lace. It is Sunday, May 10th, 2015. It is mostly sunny outside, 68 degrees. It's been a beautiful weekend. Yesterday was in the 80s here in Vancouver, Washington, and it's been a pretty nice week too. Um, I think I might have actually gotten a little bit of sun on Tuesday while I was out and about um, because it's been so bright and sunny and I need to remember to get my sunscreen back out. <laughs> I always have sunscreen on my face, but my chest and my arms were a little, a little pinker than my normal pinkness. So I would like to welcome new and returning watchers. I am so glad you're here today. It is a Sunday, and so I'm recording on a day that I don't normally record on. With Let's move into life stories, and I'll tell you a little bit about why. So this last week was my first week of physical therapy, and that is going to be twice a week for the next little while, and that is a lot more than I'm used to being out and about. So that is requiring a little bit of rearranging of my my um, time, <laughs> um, that I need a little more rest time here and there, and um, I'm going to be out doing things a little bit more and being between appointments, and so... Um, last week was so busy that I'm trying to get an episode to you guys a little earlier this week. Um, I didn't go to game day at Guardian today. Um, I just, I needed, I needed to get some things done. So, um, physical therapy is going well. Um, I think it's going to be really good. It's definitely more activity than I'm used to, though, with all of the extra walking. I had my biggest walking day this year since Rhinebeck. <laughs> um, so that might have been a little more than my body wanted to do. And so Friday, I just vegged out on the couch. I really needed that. And then we took it pretty easy this weekend. So, um, yeah, it's just... Just been lots of busyness, and um, between that, I have done a little knitting. So let us move in to yarnings and adventures in knitting. I am wearing a finished object. I'm going to step back so you can see. It goes all the way down to there. This is the Spirited Cardi by Elena Nodal in Bumble Birch Cocoon. Bumble Birch Cocoon in the Atlantic colorway. And this is a lace weight 20 silk 80 superwash merino. Um, modifications I did, I, I did a little bit shorter fronts. Um, I increased a little extra for my sleeves to accommodate my arms. And then I didn't actually make sleeves. I just did a pretty basic once I once I picked up the stitches I did just a little garter a few garter rows so it wouldn't fold over and so it's a little more like between a sleeve and a vest <laughs> um, and I really like that length I think that works well for me I can wear a lot of different things underneath it even in the winter I can put on a longer shirt and it will be awesome for that I love how it floats in the front. Um, I see that I have an end that, um, because the fronts fly opposite, reverse stockinette, I need to weave that in just a little more so I can't see it. Um, I put my waist increases up a little higher just because that's where my smallest part is. And so then that floats around my back really nicely. And I just really love this yarn. Look at all those miles of lace weight stockinette. I did alternate skeins because the two balls were just enough different that I was worried about it. And I'm really glad I did because I think it gives a beautiful marled effect. And I know that the lighting is trying to make it a little browner than it is. It's more true to color 
back here. <laughs> um, even though this took me a long time, I cast it on in January, I loved it. I mean, it was really an easy knit once I got going. It wasn't, it wasn't that hard, especially once I did got past the waist increases, which are pretty subtle. It's not, it's not a big difference. Um, yes, it was a lot of stitches, a lot of knitting, but this is something I'm going to be able to wear as a signature piece with a lot of stuff over dresses, over tanks, over longer sleeve shirts in the winter because I made the sleeves a little more roomy. That will make it so I could actually put something a little bigger underneath it. And I really, really like it. The yarn feels so soft. I really love how it blocked out. I used two tables covered with all the blocking boards and it still didn't quite all the way fit. But I made it work, and um, I think that's nine times two. I think it's 18 blocking boards. <laughs> so I had a similar issue with my Nuvo. Just, it's a lot of yardage, and so it takes up a lot of space. Um, what else can I tell you about this? I have absolutely loved all of the Bumble Birch that I've worked with. It is all of her yarns are fabulous and I have let's see I have this cranberry wellspring um that is wanting to become a, a tank I'm going to pull it up on my other screen here there we go Q. it is from the Jane Austen knits I think it's the first one and of course my internet's gonna go really slow now that I wanna look. But it's a vest and it's got a really cool um, band in the middle. Um, I think that it is by Heather Zapretti. And that is what this is slated to become. And I really, really, oh, look at that color with my lipstick. I really, really am excited to cast that on because I just love working with Sarah's yarn. So <laughs> she does sell on Etsy. Um, she's a local to me dyer. I've met her a couple times and yeah, I just, I love her stuff. So highly recommend the pattern. Elena Nodal did a really nice job. I bought the whole collection because there were multiple things in that collection that I wanted to knit. Um, I originally found out about her patterns because Amy from Stockin' at Zombies had made graceful no I don't remember which one it was the sunspot one um that uh, she did the adult version she tested the adult version of the child's one but I don't remember which one it was um and so I looked her up and I really like her stuff so I would definitely knit another one of her I will definitely knit another of her patterns since I did buy the collection so I'm really really pleased with this and You'll probably see me wearing this at events because I think it's going to really, and I think it's neutral enough. I can put nice fancy shawls on top of it without detracting from the sweater or the shawl that it just can be my normal. So, and lace weight. So this doesn't add a huge layer. Yes. If you see me at events, it's likely I could be wearing this. So that was my FO for this week. I also knit on my socks. These are my celebratory stripes, I think is what I called them. Um, in the thoroughly thwacked self-striping cashmerino superwash base. And I have heels. My fish lips kiss heels are in. You can see on this one, they almost lined up opposite very nicely um they i'm off just a touch for the striping pattern and so where they came together in the front is a little bit off it's not quite as alternating see i started out with the burgundy on the on the toe on one and the teal on the other but i'm just my gauge just it's not absolutely consistent enough to keep them going back and forth. So I'll probably end up with them not ending at the same spot. That's okay. 
So um, let's see how much yarn I have knit with just doing the heels and about an inch more. I have 54 grams left, so I'm about halfway. So I'm gonna knit these all the way up to the top. These are gonna be nice long socks. Um, and I might cast on a pair of shorter socks in the meantime. But these were what I knit a lot on during my extra bus rides this week to get to physical therapy. So that is my socks. Um, let's see where I'm at on these. This is my sleeves by Martina Bain. I am in the middle of a row. Let's get to the end of the row and then I can show you. Um, so when I bound off my Nuvum last week, I cast on another Martina Bim pattern and I'm doing this, the, it is, it's a uh, conversion. It can be a shawl or it can be a shrug. Um, whether you put the sleeves on or you wear them around your neck like the ends of a long triangle shawl. Uh, one thing that I really wish the pattern had was telling me what percentage of the yarn the back was going to use. So then I could really, because I can't, you work both sleeves and then you have the stitches from both sides and you're making a big diamond in the back, but I don't know what percentage of the whole thing the back will be to know how much to save for the back. So I have a little less yarn than what she calls for, but I don't know how much less to assume I will use because I tend to get really good mileage out of my yarn, um, where I can usually get a little more out of a skein. I don't know if it's my style of knitting or what, but all right. Now I'm in a little better spot to show you. So I'm doing these two at a time. Um, this is one end of the sleeve. See, these are the two looking like this sleeves. So I've got that far, an inch and a half, two inches on one side of it, and that far on the other side of it. So I'm in the round, I'm doing the stockinette now, um, and they're going along. They feel a little slow, and I'm not sure. I think it's just the biasing, the diagonaling just feels feels a little slow, but they're moving along. I really, the center spine on there is pretty cool. Um, you do a make one left and a make one right, which I always have to look at when I start a pattern because I, I know, <laughs> I think I always know what the make one right is, but I'm not always positive. And a lot of the patterns do it differently. So um, this is going, this is in my knitted wit. Um, I guess I've got a lot of Northwest uh, dyers. My knitted wit uh, Kashi, and I have two colors of it. And then I've got a couple um, balls of leftover Thoroughly Thwacked, the same company as my socks um, that I'd used for my roasted yarn crawl shawl last year. And I thought that that would go along with those nicely for some small stripes. So I will pop those in here and there and get a little striping going on. I won't have as dramatic of striping as Martina Bem has in the pattern. <laughs> um, so that is sleeves. So I've done this, the socks, the sleeves. Okay. This is my donut squared cowl. I put a bit of work on this this week again while I was on the bus and while I was at a book group. Um, this is, I'm making a tube with my nine inch circs, which I'm getting a little better at. Um, 
and I will then connect it together. It'll make a long cowl. How long? I'm not sure. I have um, two skeins of this, and I'm more than halfway through one. Um, and then I've got some tutti frutti, so I could put in some fun. I thought about doing a section where I alternate between, here I'll even show you. Did I show you this last week? It's sorbet. I was wrong. Tutti Frutti is the sock yarn that I'm using and I'm stepping on receipts. Um, so this is my sorbet. They're both Knit Picks Felici. Um, and I was thinking perhaps doing a section where I alternated between these and these stripes and then a, then do more sorbet at the end because that might be kind of fun. They're, they're good complementary colors and it looks like one of the pinks in there. You can see that that lighter pink looks like that lighter pink. So I think it would go well. So that is my donut squared because it's a tube <laughs> like a donut and it's going to be a tube around my neck like a donut. Eric came up with that. And that's what I've been knitting on while we talked today because now that I've kind of gotten the nine inch circ down, it is very conversational. <laughs> and then I also finished I could, have, I could have had this at the beginning with the other finished object, but I didn't. I made two yarn baskets with some yarn that Annetta sent me for my birthday. So I have a cute little one, and they're way more purple. That's closer to the color. They're way more purple than they're showing back here. I have a big one. They both have little handles. And this was just totally freeform crochet. So some of the rows... I did um I did it I did the stitches through the back loop so it made a little edge. Um it reminds me I was going to start that at the edge of that one and I didn't. Okay. Um I wove in the ends this morning. Um I probably will wash them just to get all the stitches a little closer together. I did a little bit of a decrease in the center of this one so that it would lay so that it would keep things inside a little better but then I knit a little I crocheted a little further up from that than I thought I was going to and so I think if I wash it it's going to balance it out a little better and help it stay nicely and they're going to sit up on one of my shelves and hold stuff because they're happy so that is my crochet baskets and they actually nest inside of each other Kind of fun, huh? I have a little bit of the yarn left, so I will do something, something with it. It's very lanoliny, and um, it's got little pieces of hay in it, um, <laughs> so it's a little more rustic than what I'm used to. But it was very nice. I really enjoyed working with it. And then I cast on something. <laughs> I say that with a hesitation here. Um, I wanted to make something with some of my leftover bubble birch. I have a very small amount left, like 25 grams. Um, so I cast on something, and then I tinked back a whole lot because I just wasn't happy with it. So before I started again, or before I started from my point again, I did a little swatch of some vine lace to kind of get an idea of what I was looking for because I knew basically what I was trying to do, but then it didn't um, quite work out. Okay, the cough attacked me. I had to get a drink, I'm back. Um, so I did a little swatch and now I'm back on track. So what I'm doing is I'm making kind of a combination of a long necklace and a beaded shawl. So, the cast on edge has beads on top of it, and then I'm adding in beads to the lace as I do it. The ends are going to have eye cords, I think, so I can tie them at whatever length I want, um, or they'll just be decorative if I'm wearing a, like a scarf, 
and I'm using my leftover beads. Whoosh, there we go. My purpley beads that are from my new them. See the little the little purple sparkle in there. And it looks really nice with the blue. I was originally trying to do this so I could make use of the beads that Angel and her mom had sent me. Um, but they were just too small for this lace weight. So it'd have to be some pretty teeny tiny. I'd have to have a different tool. I tried all of my different small ways of putting the beads on the yarn and they were just, just too teeny tiny. So I don't know what I will do with those. I might send them back to Angel because it was very nice of her to send them to me. Um, so I'm just kind of playing with that. It's something that I'll probably not have a real deadline for when I want it done. There we go, that's focused a little better. But it's kind of fun to use up a little bit of the leftover yarn. I always like having a coordinating accessory. That is something that a lot of my shawls, I have matching bracelets or necklaces that go with. And then I've been thinking about what I want to make next. I really want to start another top because this one is what has taken up a lot of my, my top making mojo the last few months. I mean, I did my Escarina and that was quick. Um, what else did I finish? Yeah, not, not much. There, there weren't any other tops, um, for me that I've finished this year. And I've, I have swatched for a few things. You guys have seen the Dancing Dog Dye Works. I like the swatch, but it didn't work for what I wanted it to do. Um, so this one, I'll show ya. I pimped out my Knitwear Love with little tabs. I got some little um, Avery note tabs. They're post-it note reproducible um, tabs with little see-through, see-through bases and colorful things. So I put the different main categories. The pink ones are the ones that I'm most excited to try immediately. And so I thought, that would that would differentiate for me as i was flipping through i could go between my pink sections a little more easily um and then i still want to go through and write in the style section there's a whole there's a whole worksheet in here about of whole exercises about my style and so i still want to do that I just hate to write in the book, and I know I should, but I hate it to be so permanent because it's going to be based on now. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be timeless information. I've thought about just putting post-it notes in there. I should just write in the book, right? That's what you're saying. Are you screaming it at the screen? Will you go put it in the episode thread and tell me it's okay writing your book? <laughs> Um, and then I need to go through the sweaters deconstructed still and um, write what my differences are. Like um, that I always want my, my waistline to be higher than what the pattern is and those kind of things. So what I'm thinking about doing with my Dancing Dog Dye Works is some combination of a tank and a tunic length. I really like this one in the middle here. The classic tunic has a really nice texture. I'm more likely to wear something that has less sleeves though. And then I can use the yarn quantity that I have. <laughs> I have just over 1,300 yards, so it's probably not enough for something with actual sleeves, maybe short sleeves. Um, so I'm thinking about trying to combine those ideas together and see what I can do. 
It takes a little bit of homework though. I can't just cast it on. But that's what I'm thinking about for that. And then I have a whole bag of this Classic Elite bamboo. Um, it is, it's very small quantities. These are 77 yards. Oh, that's less than I thought I had. I have 10 balls of this. Yeah, I have 10, so I only have 770 yards. Um, and so again, I'd kind of like to make a tank. I have a few ideas. I kind of like to make a tank that is umpire wasted and I just haven't found the perfect pattern. It's sport weight. Um, so I've done a bunch of searches. I have so many tabs open with searches right now. I just can't decide. Or I can't decide what I want to decide, design and then I have to design it. So, and so I had to go pause for coughing again. Um, so those are the two things that are the most needle adjacent. I just, I need to let my sleeves, I guess, be the, the autopilot conversational thing and do the work to make these two projects be what I want them to be instead of trying to make something that maybe it'll be nice, but, um, I'd like it to be, I've held on to this cotton bamboo for so long for a summery top. Why don't I have a summary top out of it? It's time. <laughs> and the dancing dog, I, time works. I would really like to have it to bring and show Michelle at ZK this year. So we'll see. Alrighty, so knitting community. All of the prizes are in the mail. I did a big post office run on Thursday and got all the international stuff gone. So I'm really excited about that. I have some more leads on some good stuff coming for prizes for you for the conversation knit along, which is still going. That is all of this second quarter through the end of June. So go and participate in the thread. You don't have to um, have it started or finished during any timeline. Just participate in the thread. So easy schmeasy. You should go. You have to be a member to join, a member of the group to be eligible for prizes, that kind of thing. Um, so those are our current, our current knitting community things. I've been trying to catch up on podcasts myself. I got to listen to a few more audio casts while I was out and about on all of my extra buses this last week. So that was really nice. I really love having having some of my friends keeping me company. That's how I feel about the podcasters. It, it feels like, oh yeah, these are my friends and I can interact with them on Instagram and Ravelry groups. And it just, it feels, it's such a full happy feeling to have that in my life. I hope you guys feel that way about the podcast you watch too, that it's just, it's like you have, have a friend that you're visiting with and do when you do and you get to have that opportunity to reach out, you should take advantage of it. Get to chat with your, your favorite podcasters. All right, let's move into the non-knitting topics and I'm going to take a seat and readjust here. So give me a second. All right, so Sagas of Geekery. This week, I got to play Istanbul and Legendary. Um, I think we played Legendary twice, and then last night we played Istanbul. And Istanbul is just such a fun um, game that changes every time, and I actually won. And I think it was the first time that I have actually won, legitimately. I have made Eric have a handicap where he had to get one more gem than me in the past to win. <laughs> um, and I got to use my... Uh, kicks my um, double click dice that I bought at GameStorm this year. I'd been looking for a set of dice for this game because there was only one set of dice and you were always re-rolling for where people went in a two-player game. And 
Eric tends to put the dice at weird places, and so I wanted my own set. So I wanted some cool dice, and these definitely fit the bill. They were the Kickstarters for the Double Clicks Dimitridon um, album, and they have they have cute little icons on them. So that was fun to get to use those. And Eric's at the Guardian Game Day today. I'm missing out on that, but um, to keep up with all my obligations and still do all the physical therapy, that was the right choice this time. Um, for my gaming friends, um, Rebecca of the Fiber and Dice podcast is going to be having a yarn along, and she has a bunch of games that Fat Cat Knits is going to be dyeing up yarn or fiber based on the ones that get the most votes. So if you go over to the Fiber and Dice Ravelry group, you could vote on which games you would like to see made into a, a colorway. I think that's awesome. And Rebecca picked some great options of ones that have beautiful, awesome colors. And um, I, I am really excited to see how that how that works up. Um, that will be really fun. So if you are at all interested in games, you should go and at least check, take a look at the options and then join and vote. So for now watching, we watched the newest episodes of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Castle. Um, and this week, ABC announced that Agent Carter is coming back this season, as well as Agent S.H.I.E.L.D., which I, was, I wasn't worried about. I figured that that one would. And Castle, which had... The ratings weren't as good this season, and not everybody had re-signed for the, current, the new season, the next season. So it was kind of up in the air. Um, so my shows are coming back. I think the official upfronts aren't until next week, but those are the ones that I care about. <laughs> I've also been watching a great amount of Stargate still. That is still the thing um, that is on my iPad when I'm relaxing. Um, I'm on season five. So Jonas Quinn. Season five? Yes. Or is it season six? Might be season six. <laughs> um, yeah. I was trying to remember when I first started actually watching in real time, because I know that I watched this season in real time. It was when it was on Sci-Fi Channel before it turned into Siffy Channel. <laughs> but I don't know which year. I'm just enjoying that. And I know I'm going to come right up soon to Atlantis, and I still haven't decided if I'm going to intermix watching those. Not sure, but then I watched the first episode with Rodney McKay and it made me think, yeah, I really should watch Atlantis. <laughs> All right, so Book of Cooking. Um, this week I made pasta bake, which is basically a layered lasagna. I mean, a lasagna, but a little deconstructed. So instead of having layers of noodles and being more... Um, exact. It's just pasta noodles and layers of stuff. Um, but I put some fun things and when I do it I make a vegetarian version and a meat version. So it's a bit of a big production but it is one of my one of my favorite meals and so it had been on my radar that I wanted to make for my birthday month. <laughs> Since birthday month celebrating expanded I figured might as well do that for last week, right? <laughs> And then, oh, I just had Mexican tacos. I But the cool thing I did was, rather than making a saucy salsa, I made kind of like a pepper salad with red pepper and jalapeno and mango and frozen corn. I think that's it. And that, that I just served that on top of rice, and it was delicious. So that was kind of a fun thing for a change. And then I had chicken tacos with rotisserie chicken and cheese on little quesadilla, uh, little corn tortillas. So that was nice. For 
fanciful chatter this week. So Kaylee is standing in front of my show notes. She was holding, she was, she was guarding them, and I took a picture of her doing that. So and I have to move her now because she's too tall and I can't see what was behind her. <laughs> okay, so fanciful chatter. I got a new lipstick. So this, get a little closer. This is perfectly posh. Um, yeah, perfectly posh. This is a candied lip dye in the color Dark Darling. And then clearly I sparkle <laughs> lip gloss. You can see it's that color. And when I put it on the first time, I thought it was a little more rusty than I am used to. I'm used to having a little more of a blue tone to my lip color, but I got some pretty good feedback on Instagram. And <laughs> I've worn it a couple times now. Here, I'll open it up. I've worn it a couple times now, and I think I like it. It's a cool idea. I like the little the little pot. Um, I've just been putting it on. You can see that my, my finger is a little pink because that finger is what I was using to apply it. <laughs> and then the gloss on top. <coughs> um, and yeah, it's kind of fun. So that's my new, my new thing. I've also got fancy blues on my eyes for you guys today. It's a little bluer in person though. Um, and my fancy new necklace. This is a find from World Market. I have a matching, um, oh, over here. I have a matching bobby pin. I don't know if you can see that because I can't see. <laughs> um, that's one of these motifs. It was a little set of multiple bobby pins. And it's got colors that are not my normal. It's got kind of greens. And then it's got the periwinkle blue, which is exactly the same color as my sweater. It seemed meant to be when I picked it up this morning and realized that. I didn't buy it with that in mind, but I'm really glad I did. <laughs> so that's fun. I love going in there. They used to send me a um, credit for my birthday. This year they just sent me a percentage off, so it wasn't quite as good of a deal, but um, it's still, it's fun to go in there and look at all the fun different things and... Um, pick up something for myself for my birthday. <laughs> oh, so the happiness continues. Um, I am thankful this month that I have gotten a bus pass. I do not always ride the bus enough to need a bus pass, but this month with all the extra physical therapy and it taking multiple buses, so then I'd have to be paying for fares that had transfers, um, having a bus pass makes that more doable. And so it's so nice to just walk up to the driver and flash my bus pass and not have to either worry about money or a punch card or whatever. Um, and that is a good thing. It also makes me feel like I can choose to walk a few extra stops because I know that I don't have to have a specific timeline like I would need for um, transfers. You have a pretty limited block of time when you can use the transfer again. This way, I have a little more freedom to choose what works for me. I did take a little wick wick moment, <laughs> what I can, when I can, and uh, I bypassed a bus stop so that I could walk to the next bus. It was a little further than I should have gone. And so that was indicated by my fibromyalgia. It just, it just was too far for me. But now I know. I've tried it. That extra mile was too much. Maybe next time I'll walk two more stops instead of the whole ten and then get on the bus. Just doing those little bit extras, figuring out what is what is the right amount for me on any given day. Takes some trial and error, but it makes me happy to be working that direction. 
And in yoga this week, um, the theme for the month is courage. And she always comes up with some great prompts um, to have us think about. And she's had different, different um, prompts for each month. And this month, being courageous. What would you do if you didn't have to fear? Is it something big and giant, or is it just something small? It's some good things to think about. <laughs> okay, guys, I think we're going to call this good for today. I've had to cut a couple times because of my coughing. I'm still working through this cold. It is trying to hang on as far as it can. And I've moved from standing to sitting a couple times trying to help my back for... All the physical therapy she'd recommended. Don't stand too long. Don't sit too long. Just so we're trying that out too. All right. So you can follow me around on the internet. I am Christine with a K on Ravelry. I am KDLB, just the letters on Instagram. My my favorite social media of choice. Um, you can find the Yarnings podcast group in Ravelry. And you can read the show notes with links to everything I talk about today at yarningspodcast.com, all squished together. All right, guys, until next time, that's the story.